Greetings, dear ones, I am Cryon of Magnetic Service. It is a meld you seek. It requires that the human being be open. But there's still a filter. For the human being will always have his culture and his language as his bias, even as he presents. And that is why spirit shares the information through cultures, through other human beings, through other individuals, and you will see it. Cryon as presented by many others in many other languages. And the more time goes on, the more appropriate it is. And so when you see those who call themselves cryon channels in other languages, know that many are appropriate. And we tell you this so that you will understand the quantum system has nothing to do with separatism. And there would be those who would want to put a wall around it and call it their own. And if you see that, you'll know it is not cryon. <laughs> Let that be the test. Look for the quantumness of it. And recognize the biases that we have been teaching today of what the human being wants to do with his spirituality. We call in the entourage, the one that has been here since this morning to activate itself, even in a more powerful way. We speak in English because this is my partner's only language. And in that linearity, you hear it one word at a time. And yet there is so much more we wish to say. Placed upon this time together is what we call the third language. It is the language of the three. It is not the third language in a linear row of one, two, three. It has the energy of three upon it, which is a catalytic energy. A catalyst in this definition, spiritually, is an energy that contains the power to shift other energy and stay the same itself. So it is a profound, pure language that all of you understand and it is present now and it starts by visiting you one at a time in often physical ways sometimes it's pressure upon you so you cannot move a certain way sometimes it's heat or cold it's the best we can do to show you the proof of what is happening at this moment is real. It is not a man pretending to channel. Despite that, there is a consciousness here that will leave with that idea. And I would like to say something about that, for when this individual leaves, there will be just as many angels around him as there are the finest healer in the room. There is no judgment of any of you. The acceptance or the rejection of this energy or this message does not pre-qualify you for enlightenment or non-enlightenment. It is your free will, loved every bit as much you are, regardless. I want to speak about the shift. I want to speak about it in ways I have not spoken before. Practical things that spirit knows. We'll speak, let's speak first about your life. I am aware of who is in front of me. Not just individually, but the energy of the group before me. As my partner said, is that of old souls. 
There is not one in the room where it's your first time on the planet. Not one. Some of you have been born this time into other cultures and English is not your first language. And yet you hear you are here in this room with the others. What happened to you? We're going to speak of this right now. Where every single human being is born into a social experience. You can't help it. It's called family. You're too small to make any decision, you would think, about who your mother, who's your father. And yet the bigger picture is much different also. For this time around, there is a potential of awakening. This potential is known. It is not predestined. It is predisposed. That is to say, it is only a potential based upon the energy of your Akash. And those who find themselves here from another culture are here because that particular journey was needed for you to sit in the chair and hear what this is. All that has happened to you, regardless of how you think about it's, it's right or it's wrong or it's difficulty, has been for your growth, dear human being, all the things that you've experienced. And you might say, this is not correct, Cryon, for I never would have chosen that or this. They were stumbling blocks for me, and I would say to you, they were not. They were spiritual bubbles of opportunity that burst upon you to propel you into a place you would not have gone otherwise. And here you sit, old soul, and you gave permission for this. You come in with a family. And you have to deal with it. And in the case of this awakening called the shift, we are aware that families do not shift together. And that means that some of you have had some difficult decisions to make. And even as you sit here today, although you love your family, You've had to distance yourselves from them. Now you are looking at something we predicted and we told you about. A battle going on, a bridge of swords, as they say. It separates you from just about everyone else. And I want to tell you this. This is the shift. The energy you find yourself in at this moment is on purpose. And it's not easy. We have spoken of DNA many times. So often have we that there are those to this day who do not understand why Cryon would speak of biology so often. <laughs> not understanding at all. But the profundity of your DNA is spiritual in essence. And we're going to speak of that yet again. But in the DNA, you carry with you an old paradigm called karma. And you are born with it. All of you. And this is the lifetime that you change it. This is the lifetime that you shift out of karma into an area of self-empowerment where karma has no energy at all in your life. And these questions about karma have been asked so many times. I want to answer some of them. 
Yes, but crying, what about next time? I'm going to have to do this all over again. Because you said humans are born in karma. Now you start to understand a permanence. Something that you should be aware of that we have not discussed before. And it has to do with DNA. When you retreat from this planet and you come back to my side of the veil, you assimilate the peace of God that you were and all the parts come together. And then you repeat the process of the split. Coming back to earth you do. You can hardly wait to get back. And what you do is you pick up your ancient Akash one more time. So although the biology may be different, may be fresh, may be a different race perhaps, even a different culture, a different gender, no matter what it is, the ancient sacred Akash remains the same. And in it comes. And it is a record of what you've done, the decisions you've made. And I want to tell you this, that dropping karma is recorded and you don't bring it back. So profound is it, I would like to tell you that in the astute group I have in front of me, even though the shift is new, there are seven of you who have come in karma clear. And you know who you are, for there was no difficulty with the family. You came into a family which was karma clear. <laughs> and that was by design. And there was no issue. They may not have been sacred thinking. They may not have been enlightened as you would call them. But they blessed you when you made the decision you did. And you might say, how is it? that I could have had this before the shift and I will say this because old souls have been working toward this for a long time it's the same reason there could be 60 year old indigo children <laughs> because these things do not appear on the planet in a flash bulb way they sneak in slowly but that is the way of it and that is the way we've always worked so that ought to tell you about some of the old souls in the seats here. The ones whose intuitions are especially sharp. The ones who can see the colors around me and my partner. They've been doing this a long time. And you know it, don't you? And you know who I'm talking to, don't you? <laughs> and you feel it, don't you? So many of you have had to make this shift and leave the family behind. This is a DNA permanency, and that is to say that you break karma. And when you do, it is recorded as such. And that means the next incarnation is going to be easier. But you knew that, didn't you? Or did you? So it's time to dispel that three-dimensional part of you that says, I don't want to come back. Because it's just too hard. And I want to tell you, dear ones, it's not going to be hard. What's the worst thing you can imagine that might happen in your life? Let's get, let's get practical. Because now I'm talking to some in here who had it happen. Don't you think we know who you were and who you are? And the potentials of what you might have chosen. All of this to get you into a place where you never had to experience that again. Not this time, not next time. There is a potential before you get here of what you'll do. Nothing is written in stone where you can change it anytime you want. But those light workers who will come back in a post shift way are going to be so powerful. 
I want to give this to you now so that that moment, that moment which will come someday where you depart this planet, what will occur to you is this, I love this place and I'll be back. And you will be back with others who love this place. And you're going to be able to accomplish so much more without the issues that faced you this time. And that's good news. And that's in the DNA. Carried in the quantum part. You live your life. You choose things to do which then involve other human beings. Not all of you awakened recently. Some of you have awakened a long time ago. But let us speak to the ones who just are working on it now. Old soul, when you are in a place where you feel comfortable with your wisdom and you don't have to figure things out anymore, you will be equal with the oldest soul in the room. For it is a quantum experience. It is not on a timeline of learning. You will remember who you are and take on the mantle of all of that which is sacred in your DNA all at once. This is to say that there are those in the room who are new at this, who can become very wise. And there'll be a tendency for others to look at you and say, how could you know what you know? You haven't done it as long as I have. <laughs> and that is, that is 3D, isn't it? That's the bias you have, is it not? And it doesn't work that way in a quantum state. There are those in the room who can pick up shamanic energy within a decade. To become those you never thought you'd become. Changing your personality completely. Staying grounded at the same time. Helping humanity in ways that you cannot even imagine now. And some of you feel that. Then there are those who say, I'm too old. And that will shift also. We've spoken of this so many times. The ways of telling DNA to alter the body clock. So it does not count as many days. But there is a process that I wish to explain to you in a clearer way so you will understand how this works regarding that which you call enlightenment, that which you call cellular change, that which you call healing. There's a process. And we've never discussed it until now. Let us review. I spoke about Elijah and how Elisha watched him transform in as much as Elisha could see of his God self. He ascended. We've spoken of this so many times to show you that this was a human being putting back together the pieces and the parts that get separated at birth. And all Elijah saw was light. And he named it. A Hebrew word. Makava. Makava. It's a vehicle you ride in. And this was the energy of ascension. And yet now we tell you this is simply the DNA field fully activated. <laughs> because when you fully activate your DNA, you take a 30% operational akash and sacredness and you bring it to 100%. That is what Elijah did. When the masters walked upon the earth, the percentage of their DNA 
that was activated in a sacred way was in the 80s. If it gets to be a hundred, you're not here anymore. The parts come together. It's hard for us to give you these things for they sound pedantic, that's to say they sound super simple. It is not about percentages of activation. It's about vibratory shift, but we can only give you these things in the metaphors that my partner is being given as he speaks. Your DNA is different from person to person. And there's a field around it that's eight meters wide and the field is your consciousness and that is the singularity of over 300 trillion parts of DNA. There's a field around you. It's a DNA field. It's a consciousness field. It is not your brain. Consciousness is not biology. It is the quantum portion of the DNA. There is a middle part, a crossover, that is partly chemical and partly quantum, and that is the non-coded protein parts of DNA. The 90% that is not understood by science is the quantum portion. Now I'm giving you this again as a review because of where this is going and what we're going to tell you about it and what you need to know because it's practical. This shift is creating opportunities of DNA change. And the opportunities come with conscious intent. When the consciousness of a human being has an epiphany, that is to say an understanding, a realization, a truth that is now manifested, an aha, There are certain attributes about it you should know. Number one, it often causes you to cry. <laughs> and I will tell you now why it does. And even in my partner's words, I want you to hear this because you are remembering who you are. And that is an amazing experience. It is the epiphany of remembrance of God inside. And you remember your power and you remember how you can heal yourself. You remember how you can have joy. You remember how you can change your cellular structure. You remember mastery. And you weep with understanding. Now, the human brain, human consciousness, human DNA does not have a delete key. <laughs> you can't unknow it. I want you to hear me say that again. There is no way for you to delete that from your human experience. It's not a computer you're dealing with. And there is a reason why. Because that particular epiphany just changed your entire Akashic record. It changed the cellular structure 300 trillion pieces of DNA changed with your consciousness in a quantum state like the crystalline grid of the earth, like the cave of creation. Your DNA in an Akashic state holds vibration, holds information, and everything you do, it remembers. And there you are, knowing more than you knew a moment ago. Now let me tell you what the next step is, for this is important. First of all, consciousness just changed physics, for chemistry changed. It rearranged itself. You're not going to see this under the microscope any more than you can see the quantumness of the three billion chemicals in DNA. It's hiding for its interdimensional. It's not a photon related three-dimensional, visible thing. Let me tell you something. There's going to come a day when there's an instrument that can see interdimensional energies. And when you have that, I'm going to invite you to put it on DNA first and stand back. 
That will be the revelation of the human genome. The patterning is there. Oh, it's there. And it's different for every human being, but it's there. And when you make a decision about your own spirituality, the pattern changes. Now, why do I tell you these things? Number one, to let you know there's a physical attribute to your decisions, and that's why you cannot, you cannot undo them. <laughs> oh, you can deny them. You can pretend they did not happen. You can go into unbalance if you want to, and you'll die earlier. You can't undo them. The truth is the truth, and it stays with you. Even what is said today as it rings true to you is part of this truth. And what happens next we've never discussed with you. Now we get into the practical. Three-dimensional cellular division. And this will explain mining the Akash. It starts with intent. Dear Spirit, show me what it is I need, which is in my Akashic record, that can be pulled forward. Is it healing? Is it consciousness shift? Is it a talent that I need? Is it a block that I need to, to get rid of? And we've explained this before. Do not go and try to speak to your DNA and pick up what you think it has. We have no idea what it has, do you? Not really. But it does. The DNA consciousness, which is apart from your consciousness, the Merkaba, knows. What you are doing is speaking to your own cellular Akash. Dear cells, give me what it is I need now from the Akash. If there is a disease in your body, it is cellular, it is there, it is in 3D, and you can see it under a microscope, you're asking your body to create cells that don't have it. Based upon a lifetime you lived before and you earned where you didn't have it. You're asking your body to regenerate itself slowly, cell by cell, without the disease. If you have a block, you're asking the body to regenerate consciousness without the block. What if there's something you can't forget? What if there is something that creates in you bad dreams? What if there's somebody you can't forgive? You, <laughs> you think I don't know who's here. Well, I've decided to talk to you for a moment because we love you enough to do that. Do you understand? We're not singling you out because we're not showing who you are, but you know. How would you like to have a situation where you can think about the person and never feel hatred again, never feel betrayal again, and only see appropriateness in God's love. It'd be a peaceful thing, wouldn't it? It'd stop the dreams, wouldn't it? Well, I want to tell you before you leave the room, how about we do it together now? If you have the courage, you say, Dear cells, this is what I want. And I don't know how it's going to happen. Bring this forward in the way that you know. And I will trust that which is sacred within me and the old soul to bring it forward. And I will claim it every day. And every single day I'll feel a little bit better about it. And now I'm going to tell you how it works. There's a lot more to your body than 3D chemistry. One of the greatest profundities you have is rejuvenation. And that is another study in itself. Why does the body regenerate so poorly? Only gives you a few years here, doesn't it? 
then it's over. Did you know that that is all changeable? When you look into ancient history and you learn about some of those living 900 years, do you think that that is somehow a mistake? I don't tell you, it is not a mistake. That is a cellular structure that has a much, much more efficient dividing structure than yours. My partner said it, could it be that you've lost something along the way? Indeed. Indeed. Could consciousness change chemistry to the degree where you can live longer, age less, and be healthy? Yes. Why don't you do it now? Let me tell you how it works. Each cell of the human body, specific to its own organ, to its own chemical imprint, divides. And that's how you rejuvenate. Every organ of the body rejuvenates. The skin rejuvenates. Keeps you alive a very, very long time. It's designed that way. Now, there's something that goes on at the point of rejuvenation. When the cell divides, left alone, that is to say, without any consciousness intent, a process occurs anyway. There is communication on cell division all through your body, all of the time. If you could slow down this communication and give it a personality or words, you'd have one cell about ready to divide, setting up the profundity of rejuvenating itself with the telomeres, the DNA, all those molecules ready to go. And at that point in time, there is an inquiry, a cellular Akashic inquiry and it, it's a fraction of a second and one cell says to that upcoming energy that is going to be its divided twin and the question is the same or not the same or not 99.9% .9 of the time it's the same without conscious intent of change, the body does what it does by itself, lives as long as it lives by itself, and will do whatever biology does by itself. But if you were to then mix it with human consciousness intent, what you do is you come right into the decision process and the inquiry is more alert. Now you might think I'm talking in circles, so I will make this more practical. My partner get this right. Let's slow it down. The human being used consciousness to say, I need help. Inside the Akash is an old soul with an old biology imprint, and it's there in every piece of DNA. Doesn't matter what the stem cell imprint is, it's there in every piece of DNA, every lifetime. And you've just given intent to change yourself, to drop the blocks, to make a healing better, to change the consciousness, perhaps to pick up a talent. And now the inquiry is more complex. Number one, it says change or not change, and it gets the signal change. It's not going to be the same. And then it says, what do we need on this division to make it incrementally different to pick up the things that the human gave consciousness to change? And in that moment, the cell divides in a way it hadn't before. And it starts to create what you ask for. Because DNA knows there is an intelligence within the Merkava, within the field around you, which is the DNA field that knows all about who you were. 
It analyzes the intent and then starts to change every cell as it divides, every organ as it divides, in a very slow process, sometimes months, sometimes years. How long does it take for a human to have new cellular structure in division? It varies depending upon the organ. But over time, every single question, millions and millions of times, the same or not, change or not. And now you know how it works. And you don't get healings instantly in this parameter. You get them incrementally. The shifts that you ask for do not happen overnight. As your cells divide and pick up that which you have asked for to mind the Akash, your consciousness continues to say, give me what it is I need. And the cells continue. It would be a mantra. Not that the body didn't hear it. <laughs> but that maybe it's different the next day you ask. There are those in this room who have done this. Healed themselves of the diseases, ask them. Now, some of you have been asking for things for a very long time, and I will tell you that they are happening slowly. So calm down. <laughs> and you will see this, for there will come a day when you're starting to feel differently, and you'll say to yourself, it's working. It's working. It's no different than what you're used to when you decide that you're going to change yourself how much weight you wish to lose. And it happens so slowly, so incrementally. But when you start to see it, what do you do? You get excited. Why wait? Let's become quantum for a moment, all of us, and think what it is that you wish to accomplish in a cellular way doesn't have to be spectacular. Each and every human being here, maybe it's that you wish to feel the love of God more in your life. Maybe it's to mind the Akash and pick up, pick up a wiser human being. Maybe it's to have more energy. And that means you're going to have to go get the athlete. <laughs> and it's there. It's all there, old soul. So many lives. So many attributes. Now you're beginning to understand why they're there. Why there's so much variety. So that your, your storehouse is big. The treasure chest of life. And experiences on the planet. Both genders is so amazing. Old soul. Now you know why. And incrementally you start to be changing. Let's go there. Whatever that is. You visualize what you choose to become. And that is your instruction set. You don't target it to a layer of DNA. You don't target it to a thing or a place. You look at the outcome. That's the visualization. And you say to your body, I am a piece of God, and I am learning to become quantum. In this interdimensional state, I claim what I can do. Now change it. It's not a request. It's an imprint of action from the boss of the cells to the cell. Change it. Your instruction to your own body. You're changing the inquiry of cellular division. This inquiry, by the way, can be seen in science. I'm not going to tell you how, but when it is, you'll know it. Brand new discovery of how cells divide and what they do right before they do. Something they emit that has not been seen. And when this comes about, 
Think of this day when I explained it to you. This is the decision. The same or different? The same or different? I bring you these things in love. They're just obscure enough not to be proven. <laughs> but they don't have to be, do they? Really? Because you know in that part of your intellect, yes, your intellect, that part which weighs truth, that it is so. And the emotional body, it's known it all along. And that's enough for now. Now what are you going to do with all of this? And what have you asked your body to do today? Now, I want to recall something. You can't undo it. Have you started something? Is it pure intent? Have you done it at all? The invitation is open with free will and free choice for you to change your own cellular structure. And this is for those who came in with issues and want solutions. I just gave it to you. And there it is. Your own cellular structure is going to change it. You watch it. And when it does, I want you to tell people about it. Not in an evangelistic way, just say, I've discovered something that works. When asked, how is it you beat that? Why are you different? Why are you joyful? What makes you laugh so much now? What have you got that I don't? Then you can speak. It's beautiful. It speaks of the love of God in you. It speaks of what the shift is really about. Humans discovering mastery. Slowly, over generations, you will create a peaceful earth. That is, that is the potential we have seen for 20 years. Regardless of how slow it is, or what you think you see around you in 3D, there is much going on that you have no idea about. And it's good. I'm crying of magnetic service and I will be here in this place all night long in the morning and when you return. And yet I'll also go out the door with you. When you go home or when you have a meal I'll also leave with my partner. You can't put me in a place because I belong with you as the peace of God that I am inside your DNA. And anytime you want to feel this, all you have to do is ask for it. And don't be surprised if the love of God flows into you in a way that makes you smile. That's what masters do. <laughs> That's what masters do. And so it is.